mate and call of the Harbor Freight Floor Jack. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So, uh, this week, as promised, we are working on Harvey Dent. Jackson's actually already under there working on getting the uh, getting the backside up in the air. There's a joke there. <laughs> but uh, he's working on getting her jacked up so we can start uh, pulling the rear suspension apart because this week we are lowering this turkey. Uh, so what we've got is, and I hadn't even got them out of the boxes yet, I just got out here to the shop. And uh, so what I've got in the boxes is, uh, we have an axle flip that'll take the axle and move it to the top of the leaf springs. That should give us four to five inches-ish of uh, drop. Uh, so, and we're also gonna do a C-notch in the rear as well. So. Uh, but you gotta flip the axle first to figure out its placement on, uh, uh, figure out where the axle falls on the frame. We'll get into that later. But, uh, <laughs> um, so we're gonna do the axle flip first. We're gonna figure out where it needs to go on the frame. And then we can go ahead and get our, our C-notch set up and start hacking that thing out. And then uh, once we get the rear end done, we'll move to the front and uh, we'll get the front pulled apart and on that we're just gonna cut uh, cut uh, coil springs. Now we do have uh, shocks that I'd purchased a while back um, from Belltech. I think that's their nitro shocks, if I remember correctly. Um, it was their cheaper ones. But uh, we, got a, a sh we got shocks and we got a flip kit that uh, reuses the factory U-bolts. That's how I got it so cheap. Because I think I only paid 50 bucks for it. And then we got the uh, C-notch bracket, which I think was like a hundred bucks on eBay. So, uh, so we're gonna get to it on the rear and try to get this rear end dropped. And then we can get up here on the front and get to working on it and get it dropped. And that one will be at the low, low cost of free because uh, we're just gonna be cutting up cool springs on that one. So, uh, well, it looks like Jackson's got it up in the air. He's getting ready to pull the wheels off. So uh, I'll let him get to it and uh, I'll catch up with y'all here in just, uh, just a couple minutes. All right, first things first. We gotta get, uh, we already jacked it up, pulled the wheels off, don't mind Jackson's grunting over there. He's uh, working on getting the shocks off. Um, we went ahead and secured this guy on the frame rail with the uh, uh, jack stand. So that way, in case we have to take the entire leaf spring off, we still have access to that. So what my hope is, and this has worked in the past, is pull the shocks. Um, we're not going to pull the brakes because I really don't want to deal with having to bleed stuff. We're not going to pull the U-joint and the drive shaft because if you ain't got to, why do it? So uh, pull the shocks off, pull the U-bolts off, and we'll probably disconnect back here in the back on the leaf spring. And then that way we can take, pick it up, flare it out, bring it down. And then we can take and turn the axle as cattywampus as we can. And then we can pull on this and then set the axle on top. It's a two-man operation. And then uh, basically take the axle and turn it that way as far as we can and rinse and repeat on that side. So that way, minimal amount of work needed to get the axle on top of the uh, leaf spring. And that way we don't have to pull the leaf spring completely out. Because um, I want to say GM was really smart with this. And uh, yeah, there was something here where you can't pull the bolt out because it hits the gas tank so uh um yeah i don't want to deal with all that <laughs> really don't want to drop a gas tank just to you know flip a rear axle so <laughs> um so that's that's what our game plan is and that's what we're going to go for so uh so jackson's almost done getting the uh shock off on that side so i gonna have to catch up over here um then we're going to break loose the u-bolts get the axle dropped and then break loose the rear leaf spring hanger right back there and uh, drop the leaf spring down and do our little, you know, thing to, uh, to get the axle on top of the leaf springs. So, uh, so I guess that's what we're going to do. And then, uh, I guess we'll catch up as uh, soon as, as soon as we get, you know, going there, unless I run into some fun little tips and tricks along the way. So, uh, we'll catch up in a bit.
right, so we got the uh, we got the U-bolts off. I uh, got the lower uh, what you call it, the bottom plate. I guess you would call it at this point um, for the U-bolts to attach to. Got those out. Got the U-bolts off. This guy I think gets relocated, but I'm not sure. I'll have to go get the uh, the actual flip kit because I I don't recall to be honest with you. Uh, Jackson's working on getting the rear pulled loose. So we were going to just pull it actually off the shackle. But uh, I, I started looking and I realized the bolt goes into the frame, so that's not going to work for us. So we're just going to pull the, uh, the the hanger bolt out right here. So we got it soaking. Jackson's working on trying to get his side broke loose right now, and then as soon as he gets done, I'll get over here and work on my side. So, <sighs> so here we go. So we're gonna take a quick little break, let a little blood flow back into our lower extremities here. Um, so I figure I'll show y'all guys the flip kit that we got for like, like I said, it was like 50 bucks. So uh, we got our saddle and we got our plate for the U-bolts. Uh, so what this guy do is the rear axle will sit in that, like that, if I remember correctly. Um, I can't honestly remember it. Uh, we'll figure it out when we get it on the truck. But uh, you got your centering pin, your hole for the centering pin, so you have to actually move the axle rear just a little bit, if I remember that correctly, um, because lowering it pushes the drive shaft forward, so we'll have to basically push the axle back a little bit so we don't run into uh, bottoming out our, our drive shaft yoke there. So, uh, so this guy bolts up. It basically centers and sets the pinion based off of these tabs right here that mount up on the old spring perches. So, uh, so those will sit up on spring perches, and then the axle, you know, the centering pin will go up right through there. And then these guys will go on the bottom and, uh, or the top. They'll go somewhere. And the U-bolts will go through that. <laughs> and that's that. So first things first, though, we got to get the axle on top of the springs. So uh, I guess it's time to get back under there and get to it. bumper bracket <clears throat> oh man that's a that's gonna leave a mark and i just bumped it again dang it man you are best friends with it ah <sighs> oh well oh my god the bolt turns this thing might actually come out Looks like it. Okay, take that, put it on there by a couple, you know, two or three threads, a couple little turns, and then take the hammer and tap on it to knock that bolt down. All right, All right now take the nut off and have the hammer. Screwdriver. Yeah, this ain't gonna be long enough. We're gonna pass it. There's a, I think there's like a tire tool in there. You know, a tire plug. Yeah. Yeah, let me see that. That might work. <clears throat> if I can get out a lick on it. Damn drop hitch is in the way. The old drop hitch is in the way, so we can't get the bolt out. It's always something. So I can't get the bolt out of the hanger here until we get the drop hitch out of the way. So got to pull the drop hitch. It, luckily, it's only three bolts on each side. So, uh, uh, so we'll get those out, get that dropped, and then we can pull this out. And then we can pull the leaf spring off. Oh, good God. All right, so we got the uh, drop hitch out of the way. So now... Get the bolts out. <laughs> if I can reach the bar. So, got that bolt out of the leaf spring. Should be able to just pick her up. And that's out of the way now. So, all right, Jackson, if you would. 
let's lower this jack down very slowly. Great. All right, Jackson, lower it down just real. Oh, 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 damn, son, that was not slow. I thought jack it, was... it back up. We got too much stress on the brake line. Okay, right there. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah, you gotta be. I, I thought it was tighter than that. I was expecting resistance. So let's see if we can flare this guy a little bit. Let's see. I can take take your end of the axle and push it forward. Towards the front. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's see this. I need to get. Don't do anything just yet. Just hold yours up. All right. Getting hit by the bolt. So, uh... Pull your weight. Can you push your side forward, any? Almost there. You ready? And go. Boom. All right, dropper. That wasn't that hard. <laughs> All right. Let's back over this way. Oh, right now I can do. Well, we got it now. We still got to drop your. We got to drop your loose spring off. Wow. This won't fit in there. See, this way will be a little bit easier. Because this way we're not fighting. All right, take your wrench. On the... Okay. So, on the nut, on the bolt, there's a washer. Push that washer out. Okay, and stick your wrench right back up in there. No, no. Hold your wrench up. All right. Well, I just got it. Look. Bolt, wrench... Hit with the hammer. Hit the wrench with the hammer. Okay. So now pick up your leaf spring out of the hanger. Pull it towards you. Lower it down. That's about as far as we got. What do you mean? Exhaust. Oh, the damn exhaust. Yeah. Oh, the exhaust. Well, I mean, heck, we got enough room to work. We can just jack it up. What do you mean jack it up? Jack it up. Jack what? Oh, this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm like, you got to be more specific than it. Jack the axle up. Yeah. Now we have room. Yes. And we're over. Okay. Well, alrighty. So we got the uh, got the uh, walking around over here. There's a lot of crap. Um, so we got the rear end somewhat ready to go. We took the uh, we got the spring still laying down. Jackson's laying down like the spring. He's reenacting. Um, passenger side was stuck on the exhaust. Didn't think about that. So um, we were able to tilt the axle and then stick it back on top of that. So it is Friday night. It's like 730. It's dinner 30. Um, I had a full day at work. He had a full day at school plus workouts. So we're tired. We're going to call it a night and go get us some pizza. So, uh, uh, so we're going to get back out here in the morning and get back to this and try to get this thing knocked out, uh, as quickly as we can tomorrow. <laughs> I got other stuff I need to do tomorrow. So, uh, so anyways, we'll, uh, we'll see y'all in the morning. Alrighty. Next day we're out here. Well rested or decent rested and, uh, ready to tackle the rest of the suspension. So, uh, where we left off last night, we got the axle actually on top of the leaf springs. Now we say that the leaf springs 
back up here and uh, put back in the hanger. So we're gonna have to jack up the rear end. Uh, actually, we're probably gonna have to reposition that jack because that doesn't look happy. So, uh, so we gotta jack up the rear end and uh, get the leaf springs back in the hangers. And then we can set the rear end down on the, uh, the little cups I got over there on the hood. So we can set that in there and we can get this thing started kind of loosely bolted together. Uh, so that way we can get everything lined up where our center line for our axle is so we know where to set our center line for the C-notch. Um, and then this bump stop's also gonna go away. So I think that's just riveted in. Yeah, it feels like it's just riveted in, two rivets. One on that side, one on that side. So that's just riveted in. So we'll have to get the, uh, the air hammer out, air chisel, and knock that loose, not a problem. So we'll get that banged out. And then, uh, uh, you know, like I said, once we get everything kind of situated, then we'll get back over here and, and get lining everything up for the C-notch. So uh, I guess uh, I guess we're gonna get to it, getting these uh, leaf springs back up where they belong. And uh, we'll catch back up then. Well, as we just figured out, these uh, factory bump stops, that is not a rivet. I thought it was just like a, on the square bodies, but as you can tell, Jackson's over there. Maybe you can tell. Jackson's over there with a ratchet on it because uh, apparently it is studded. Let's see. Don't know if you can actually see. Yep, there we go. You can see it's studded. And then there is a nut on this side. So, um, he's getting his side done so while he's doing that i'm gonna get over here and get everything kind of prepped and ready because i need to be able to get all the way up underneath the truck so uh i've got to get the leaf spring up get the axle up get all that kind of loosely set in place so while he's doing that i'm gonna get over here and get this stuff kind of sorted out and ready to go because i gotta pull the brake lines off the frame because they're mounted up to the frame so i gotta pull the brake lines off of that so i can actually access that so uh so i'm gonna get to all this he's gonna work on that and then we'll be right back Now what we do is we take our uh, our new saddle and that's going to go right here on our uh, center pin for the leaf springs. Um, you're going to place a hole towards the front which is going to push the leaf spring or the uh, rear axle back. So you can go put yours in if you want to son. That's the most that I got. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Get that in. So the rear axle has to roll backwards. Um, need you to need you to lower the jack just a touch. Yeah. Very slowly this time, please. So now we actually have the uh, axle sitting with its weight on the leaf spring, kind of on the perch. It's not quite there. Um, check on your side, son. Make sure that you're not sitting on that brake line right there. The brake line, no. The back. Right. Right. Seem like it. Okay. So this is the fun part. This is where we got to pick it up and recenter the whole rear axle. So right now our axle is actually pushed my way a little bit too much because it has to sit. This edge right here has to sit inside this saddle of the the factory uh, spring perch. So uh, so we both got to pick up our ends and go your way with it. Oh, coming off. That's okay. Where went yours? Yep. Uh, um, in here. I definitely noticed that because you know I'm ready. Yeah. So now you just make sure that I don't push your end off. I'll lift up on this side. No, 
I'm not stupid, right? Okay. So yours should be seated. Mine is seated. Yep. There we go. A little bit of brute strength. Pick up the axle. And uh, so you can see how it sits in there. It sits inside this perch. And uh, with it sitting back on that center pin, it sets the pinion angle on the uh, on the rear end. Because you're going to want your pinion angle to force to point down a little bit more than it was pointed up. Because now you've lowered, you've raised, essentially you've raised the pumpkin up now, you know, five inches or so. So if it's still sitting with it angled up like this, it's uh, it's going to be too much of an angle and you're going to have a drive shaft vibration. Nice thing about these is they kind of take into account that change in height. So they set your pinion angle to where it actually levels it out. And uh, I'll show you here in a few minutes uh, that it's it's nice and straight. So now we get the fun-filled task of figuring out the rest of this because the kit that I bought didn't come with any directions. So <laughs> some of the wonderful things you run into whenever you buy the uh, discount kits. So, all right, I'm going to try and figure out top and bottom of this. So that way, uh, that way we can get everything kind of sorted out here. So give me a couple minutes and I'll be right back. All right, so here's what we're running into. We've got the, uh, the place where the center pin used to go on the bottom. And then we have the strap for the top for the U-bolts. U-bolts sit here, a strap on the bottom. And that's one of the reasons why this kit was so cheap is we're re reusing the uh, factory U-bolts. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have spent the extra $20 and got the one with the U-bolts. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, we're just working with what we got. So there's no way to center this, you know, so he can just kind of move around. You know, not that this truck puts, puts out high torque numbers or anything, but we don't want these guys to be able to move back and forth. Um, so rather than just, you know, hoping for the best, I went and found... A nut and bolt I already did the other side but i went and found a nut and bolt they'll uh, push up through here they'll push up through here and then uh, uh we're gonna put it with the bolt coming up and the nut on the top side one of the other issues i ran into is i could only find shouldered nuts i don't have any um any bolts this size with a, a non-shouldered nut on it so i don't have a drill bit quite big enough but you can kind of see I got in there and knocked it down with a three quarter bit and actually a step bit. So that way it'll sit down in there. It still has a little bit of, you know, overhang outside the hole, but there's not a whole lot I could do about that. And we're talking just a tiny, tiny little bit. So once I get that bolt in there and get her centered up and tightened down good and tight, that should, uh, that should hold this guy to where he's not able to slide back and forth. So. That's what we're doing right now. So uh, let me get the camera set back up and we'll get back to it. Okay, all right, so these are not totally torqued down yet. I just got them good and snug. And uh, obviously this one is turned some more, but uh, got them good and snug. That way the axle's where it needs to be. Uh, that lets me move on to do other things. Uh, I gotta get this bump stop out and I gotta get up underneath the truck to get to it because I gotta move the brake lines out of the way to get to the nuts for this guy. Once Jackson gets his side tightened down pretty good, we'll take uh, we'll take the rear end, we'll jack it up till it's pretty much touching the frame. Um, we'll mark our center line on the axle tube and where our center line is here, which will probably be somewhere in this neighborhood, maybe a little bit forward, eh, somewhere over here. So we'll mark our spot here and that'll give us our center line for our C-notch where we go to cutting this frame out. So. So we'll catch back up with you here in just a minute. 
What I just got finished doing, it was just too much going on there to be able to film it. But uh, we got our, uh, you know, the thing, bump stop. Uh, so we got our bump stop off of there. Um, that wasn't too bad, it was a little bit of a pain, but not too terrible bad. There was also two bolts here, and those two bolts held on this bracket for the axle vent tube and for the soft line to hard line. Uh, for the rear brakes. So, uh, got those all pulled off. So now we get to jack the rear end up, find our center line and uh, get that all marked out and kind of figure out, you know, where things need to go. And uh, here for long, we actually get started cutting on the frame and get that, you know, get that all ready to go. So I will, uh, I'll catch back up with y'all here in just a moment. All right, so time to get these guys out. So uh, these are the super cheap and extremely dull razor blade I have. Uh, these are the really cheap uh, C-notch brackets that I got. God, my, this razor blade is pitiful. So like I said, I got these off of eBay. They were like a hundred bucks. I don't know how much they cost from other places. I know there's some, you know, nice name brand uh, places that sell these kits, um, like Bell Tech and what is that, McGahee's or something like that. Um, oh, McGahee's. <laughs> but uh, there's all sorts of places that sell these, and they're all pretty much the same thing. You just want you just want some good thick steel um, that'll support where you're literally cutting the frame out. So <laughs> so uh, uh, there we go. So if you look at these guys, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a bend to it, and that's going to help you to orient where it goes on the actual truck. Um, I'll actually have to get under there and look because I think the frame kicks out going forwards. So I think this will be my drivers and this will be my passengers. I could be completely backwards on that. So what we're going to do is uh, we've actually already got a good center line mark, which is right there. That's our bump stop. Um, most of the kits come with hardware, so bolts and some bump stops to put in because, you know, you just got rid of yours. So, uh, uh, luckily for us, the bump stop is generally right in the middle of the actual C-notch. So, and if you're not sure what the point of a C-notch is, it's to give you this much more clearance. Um, cause whenever you move that axle on top of the, uh, leaf springs, um, you just, you know, if your axle or if your frame's just right here, you've only got, you know, an inch, inch and a half of up travel. So this, you know, effectively gives you another two inches or so of up travel. Um, so that's why you do that, so you're not banging into the frame and making it one, a very uncomfortable ride, and two, very noisy. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So uh, uh, so anyways, I guess what I'm gonna do is uh, get back under the truck. So we got the axle jacked up to where it needs to be so we can kind of figure out our center line there. Um, so we can get our center line laid out there, get our center line laid out for this. And then we can go and start figuring out what needs to move, what needs to happen where. Uh, specifically on the driver's side because that's where the brake line and the electrical for the tail lights and the brake lights and all that stuff go. Um, that stuff has to be kind of moved temporarily and then potentially rerouted. Maybe have to drill a couple holes in this um, where the bracket bolts through for the uh, the brake. Yeah, where the bracket bolts through for the brake line. So anyways, um, that's I guess just kind of the little rundown of that. So uh, uh, now some folks do elect not to bolt these in, uh, bolting them in super easy. And I've got it running on big John's got a C notch kit on it. It's bolted in, uh, Steve's got a C notch on it. It's bolted in. Um, so the bolts are fine. I've never had a problem with them backing off. Uh, usually they're nylocks. Um, I think these are nylocks. Yeah. So they're nylock nuts. Um, I think the ones I have on Big John actually have lock nuts or uh, lock washers on them as well. So, um, 
So I've never had a problem with these guys backing off, but a lot of guys will end up taking and scuffing the paint up uh, behind these and basically just doing a plug weld where all the, the screw holes are and then running a bead here and then running a bead along the bottom edge and you know just kind of get her set in there. So uh, we're not going to go that far because I've never had any real issues out of the bolts. So, all right, enough of that. Let's get underneath the truck. All right, so I was correct. The, uh, the frame does flare out as it moves forward so it narrows towards the rear so this guy is the one for the back of the truck so now the thing is we know what we got and we know where it goes mostly we just got to now figure out our center line of the axle and uh, uh, figure out exactly where that is here and then we can match up the uh, Then we can match up that bump stop uh, hole where it goes. So we've pretty much maxed out my jack. It's not going up any higher. So usually I like to make these guys basically kiss. Now kiss. But uh, <laughs> but I usually like to make them you know, basically right there on top of each other. Um, what I've done in the past is I've just basically taken a piece of string and made a little plumb bob out of a piece of string and a nut and just hung it down and that way I can kind of figure out where my center line is. Um, so on this one, it does look like this is our center line right here. So I'm actually gonna mark that right there. My handy dandy grease pencil. Now, as this thing compresses, it'll actually move back. The axle actually moves back a little bit as it compresses um, due to the shackle and uh, everything. And actually, you know what I think we're gonna do, son? Mm. I think we're gonna drop that jack and put that uh, six by on it. No. You ready? Yeah, it's, there's nothing in the way of it. Just drop her on down. All right, so. We put a block on the jack, and we're gonna jack it up and see if we can get this a little tighter in on the uh, on the frame. I did say my center line was here. The center line's actually moved back about I don't know, not by much, maybe a quarter inch. So now we're gonna mark our center. It's hard to make sure you're not parallaxed on this. So there's where our center line is. And it's okay if you're off by just a smidge. It isn't gonna be the end of the world. Now, you don't wanna be off by like a half inch or an inch, cause then you're just, you're not gonna have a good time. So what we gotta do now is I need to go to the other side. I gotta do the same thing over there so we know where that we're in good shape side to side. Um, making sure that we got the center line of the axle marked on the frame. And then we will take our bracket and then we'll make a little cardboard template and mark the center on it and then we can line it up here and then we'll know where to cut on the frame and then we get to uh, we drop the axle down and then we get to cutting so let me go to the other side and do that and i'll uh, we'll, we'll catch back up once i got a template made all righty so i went and made a little template all i did was just take a piece of cardboard set it over the opening that you got to cut out and bang on it with a hammer and then just cut the outside edge of the uh, the dent that it makes out. Um, and since I did this on the driver's side, I made sure to mark, you know, front, rear. Sometimes there's a difference. Most times there's not. Uh, this one, I don't think there is really any difference. But just to be on the safe side, went ahead and marked it that way. I also used the bump stop as my reference for my center line. So I made a mark on here with the bump stop where it lined up and then I just took a straight edge and took it on down. And uh, so that gives me my, my center line that I can line up with my center line here on the frame. Big thing you gotta remember on this is don't take it up too high because this is literally the same size as that piece of metal that's coming up in here. So you gotta get it almost flush. I usually go a little bit above flush with the bottom of the, uh, of the frame. That way you know you got plenty of room. So we're gonna come up a little high and then come down there. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna take my grease pen, or grease 
pencil, mark my lines. Now I had to scrape the uh, chassis off because there's so much grime and crap on it that my grease pencil doesn't want to write. You can also do this with uh, a Sharpie, but I tend to lose the Sharpie whenever I've got the grinder going. All right. Yep. So this is all we're cutting out right here. Uh, one of the things I got to make sure to be careful of on this one is I do have brake lines right there. And like I said, the electric for the rear ends back there as well. So I'm probably gonna slide up underneath there and get a zip tie and just kind of zip tie that stuff away as far away as I can. Um, that way it doesn't get damaged and I'm not having to replace or patch a, a brake line or same thing with the electrical. So, and then as soon as I get that done, we'll get in here with the uh, cutoff wheel and we'll get to hacking on this guy and uh, get this cut out. First off though, before we do that, to make your edges, to make these corners so you can actually make them, um, my buddy Jason was showing me this trick whenever I first did a C-notch. Take you a drill bit and just drill you, drill you a hole in these corners. That way you got room for your blade to go through without taking you know material way up here or way out here. So you can just take off to that corner and then you can start over here and take off to that corner as well. So thanks Jason for that little tidbit. So we'll get in here, we'll make our holes on these corners so we can make our straight cuts and then we'll come back in with the flap disc and just kind of clean the edges up and make it nice. So, uh, all right, I guess I'm gonna get in here, get these brake lines tied back and the electric, get that out of the way and then we'll drill our holes and we'll get to cutting. All righty, so. Now we're ready to start hacking. So one thing that I've done that uh, I don't know if it's really required, I do it just for safe, you know, peace of mind, so to speak, is uh, we're supporting the truck way up in front of the spring, in front of leaf spring hangers on the front. So we're about midway down the frame up on the front and that's supporting the whole back end of the truck. So my fear is, and it's always been like this, I don't want to cut this and then this frame just kind of, I mean, it's, I don't, I'm not afraid that it's going to bend in half but I don't want it to droop. So uh, I had Jackson go over there and just put a uh, six by on the jack and just basically support the back of the truck with it. Um, basically just enough to kind of take a little bit of the weight off of uh, the rear of the truck, just to make sure that this guy doesn't flex or do anything weird. Like I said, don't know if that's really required, but that's the way I've always done it, just to make sure, because we're cutting out a fairly good chunk of frame or taking out this bottom piece. Um, so I don't, I just, I don't want this thing to kind of, you know, taco on me. So we're going to get in here. We're going to center punch somewhere in this neighborhood. Well, there's two of them. And then somewhere over in this neighborhood. Center punch that. We're gonna take a little drill bit and just drill a little pilot hole. All right, now we got our little pilot hole drilled. We'll take a step bit and I'm just gonna open this hole up, uh, basically so it's kind of kissing that corner. Same thing over there. Not exact, but it's pretty close. I have a feeling this other side's gonna be even worse because I'm a little too far in. Uh, oh, by the way, I took the brake line and everything and basically threw a zip tie on up in there on a uh, between a rib and on this bed support and just zip tied everything on further out that way. So there's nothing behind here right now. Um, and when you do that, just be careful with this brake line. Um, Cause as I was pulling on it, I was like, eh, it may be bending. So I'll have to double check that. I don't see any brake, you know, fluid dripping on the ground. So I think we're okay. All right, so now we got our relief holes basically cut, drilled, whatever you want to say. This one's just off. <laughs> I can go get a bigger step bit and maybe get that a little bit better. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, now the fun part of the spinning wheel of death. All right, 
I guess uh, nothing to it but to do it. I'm trying to make sure I get my lights out of the way here. All right, here we go. Yahtzee. <laughs> All right. Not the prettiest cuts in the world, but it'll do. All right. All righty, now we can do a little quick test fit. And that is freaking beautiful. Ah, that is about perfect. I may be a little bit too big on the hole, but it'll be, it'll be okay. So uh, now I just need to clean it up with the flap disc a little bit, and uh, then we can start uh, kind of getting this guy laid in. That may need to go up a little bit. No, that's bottoming on the bed. So that should be up as high as she needs to go. So what we'll do now is I'll get a couple C clamps and clamp this guy down. So that way he's not going anywhere. And uh, then we can get out there and we can mark our holes for, uh, for drilling. So we can drill our holes for the uh, for the mount. C notch is cut out. We've got it held up with these uh, welding clamps. So uh, now we just got to center punch these and drill them out. Here is the problem. I am constantly not hitting center on these guys. <laughs> I'm always off by just a little bit, and I don't I don't do it enough to justify buying the really nice center punches that, you know, basically you select the size hole and you stick it in there and it center punches dead center on it. So we're gonna go best effort on here and just see what we can't do. That's pretty close, I think. Well, it was. Alrighty. So we got things center punched. Let's throw some holes in this thing. Okay, so we got our pilot holes drilled. Uh, this guy is actually a little off centered that way. So I'll end up having to make that hole just a little bit bigger than, than what it should be. Uh, but the rest of them seem to be pretty centered. So, uh, I may have done a pretty good job on most of those, except for one. I guess one out of eight ain't too terribly bad as far as messing up. So let's go ahead and drop this out of the way. Maybe. All right, do yourself a favor and get, if you're doing this and you're gonna be doing it frequently, get you an electric drill, because this part eats batteries up. So I'm gonna throw a little uh, WD-40 on the old drill bit here, step bit, and we'll get the letter E. Now, that's a brand new bit, so it was cooking through there, and I'm really glad I bought that bit. <laughs> Usually, it takes a lot more than that. We're gonna open this one up just another size. Man, 
mainly because uh, this one was off centered. That's dry enough. I'm gonna call that good. And we're just gonna stick a bolt in. And maybe there we go. Okay, so this guy's installed. Kinda. I still gotta torque these bolts down. Um, I think it was this one was crooked. It was one of uh, maybe it was this one. It was one of these three was crooked, so it's high quality. But uh, anyways. <laughs> So now all I gotta do is crank these bolts down, just get them their final tightness. Uh, the other thing I gotta do is I gotta go on the other side of the frame and mark my lines, um, or mark my holes for that brake line bracket uh, and drill those through here. Um, that way I can mount that back up where it goes. Um, and then just cut everything down and get everything bolted up good and tight. But uh, yeah, I just go through and uh, cinch these guys down. Like I said, you know, when you go with the cheaper stuff, you don't get like instructions and all that fun stuff. So I don't know what to, uh, what to tighten these down to, what to torque them to. So uh, we'll just go with the old uh, feeling and see if uh, see if we can't make them stretch a little bit. But uh, now before I mounted this guy up, I went ahead and mounted the uh, uh, what's this thing bump stop. So I mounted this little bump stop. So one thing you may run into with these is it may be actually too long. Um, I'd had this, I ran into this problem, I think on Big John, um, where it was just too long and I was still making contact with it all, you know, all the time, uh, with bigger bumps. So I just shaved, I think like a half inch or three quarter inch off of it. I just basically put a, a sawzall on it and just cut it across. And, uh, that seemed to work just fine. So, uh, uh, but this is a lot easier to put in while you still have this in your lap. When you got the bracket in your lap, this is a lot easier to put in. So, uh, uh, so that guy's in there. Uh, these guys are tight. They just ain't, you know, torqued. So uh, I'll get that torquing done and get that part squared up. And uh, we'll get these holes drilled and this side will be done. So I'm gonna wrap that up. There's not really much of anything to see here, but uh, uh, so once I get that all wrapped up, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn the camera back on and get back to it. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and knock out the passenger side. It's legit the exact same thing. Um, as what I did here, the exact same process. So uh, I'll go on the passenger side, get that knocked out, and uh, then I'll get back with you. All right, after, I don't know, two, two and a half hours, something like that, finally got the complete rear end done. Both sides cut, everything on there, everything uh, tightened back down, everything torqued down, uh, reinstalled-ish, the, uh, the uh, tow bar, not that this thing's really going to tow, but the drop hitch is still, we, we just went ahead and installed it back on there. We just had a bolt that just didn't want to go. So it's in there. <laughs> Cross thread, nature's Loctite. So, uh, so that's in there. So now, well, now we got this. <laughs> she is, uh, she is sitting low in the back. I wish there was a better angle I could do here in the shop. It's just, it's a little tight in here. Let's see if I can do a little bit better one this way. So, yeah, so now you can kind of see it sat down real nice. We're gonna have to cut your tailpipe off, but it sat down real nice over the wheel. So uh, our gap between the, the, the wheel well and the wheel, perfect. Um, now we just gotta work on the front. All right, so Jackson's going to go ahead and start uh, jacking the front up so we can go ahead and get uh, get the front on stands, pull the wheels off, and basically break apart one of the ball joints so we can get the springs out. Um, I've got an extra set of springs, um, and so now I'm just trying to figure out where we need to cut these springs. Uh, doing a quick goggle machine, it looks like um, every one round is worth about two inches. So uh, two to three inches. It, I guess it depends on the age of your springs as well. If they're really old and they're tired springs, this thing's got old and tired springs. It'll be worth a little bit more than if you had, you know, young, healthy springs. So uh, so since this thing's got 320,000 miles on these springs, um, I figure if we cut two rounds out, that ought to give us five-ish inches. Somewhere in that neighborhood. 
Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now is going ahead and just pulling two rounds off, uh, cutting two rounds out of the spring. And that ought to give us around five inches, maybe six. And I might end up using these other springs that I have that are, you know, a little bit, a little bit newer. They got less miles on them. So uh, we may end up using those um, just because one, they're already out of the truck. And then two, they're a little more healthy. So if we throw those on there and cut it down and two rounds might be worth right at five inches, which is what we need. We need five inches to get cut off of it. So uh, instead of two rounds being worth six inches or so, it'd be kind of cool because it would definitely drop the front end of the truck, but we don't want to go too low. So, uh, but can you go too low? <laughs> but no, seriously, this thing's going to be cool as hell. I'm, I'm loving the way this looks already. So, uh, so anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Jackson's getting the jack stands underneath this guy. We're going to pull the wheels. We're going to break this guy apart and we're going to probably cut one of these we're gonna cut some springs damn it <laughs> so i'll be right back all right so i went ahead off camera pulled the uh, cotter pin and uh, went ahead and broke my upper ball joint loose so uh the nut's loose on it so this way i can hopefully hit on this guy this thing hadn't been on there too terribly long so hopefully that uh, ball joint will pop out and i don't have to worry about uh you know destroying the boot trying to get that there's probably only about a sixteenth inch of clearance but that's all i need so if i beat down on this guy maybe he'll break loose all right let's see what happens ah loud oh my god i gotta put my earplugs in There it goes. So this is where it gets fun and dangerous. So I put a jack on the lower control arm because that spring's under tension right now. And I took just enough off to where I can get this nut on off of here. So that should release the tension as I lower the jack and let this drop out a little bit or hopefully enough to where I can get that spring out. All right, so. Only thing I really gotta watch here is the brake lines. Make sure they don't get too taut. And that might've been a little fast. So this should allow this to drop out. Brake line is tight as a damn drum. Looks like I'm gonna have to pull the brake caliper off. All right, let's take some of this tension back over here. Now that the brake caliper's out of the way for now, <laughs> or it's not attached to the knuckle, now I can drop everything down and then fight with the brake caliper to make room for the spring to come out. So let's see how that works. All right, this may not be the smartest move in the world, but I've never claimed to be a smart man. I am not a smart man. I'm not a smart man. But uh, right here is one and a half turns off of that spring. I really am trying not to have to tear everything apart. So I'd have to take the steering knuckle off. I'd have to take the uh, sway bar off in order to get this thing to flex out enough to drop that off. So I'm just gonna cut the spring at one and a half turns. That should relieve the pressure maybe violently, and uh, should allow me to pull the bottom half of the spring out and uh, get the top half going. And then we can see where we're at. So, uh, I guess here we go. Yeah. 
All right, well, that worked about how I'd hoped, other than it tearing up my cutoff wheel. So that takes off a round and a half of spring. Ow. Let's get everything twisted and pulled out. All right. Yeah, I only cut about three quarter of the way through. Right. So I cut about three quarter of the way through and it broke the other. Huh. So, and that is a round and a half. So, we can take this and set this guy in here. All right. So now, let's jack this thing back up. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, just so I don't have to keep taking this thing apart back and forth and all this other good stuff. Um, got the upper ball joint just kind of, you know, hand tighten. Uh, I'm not even putting a brake caliper on. I'm having Jackson put the wheel on the other side. Uh, and then I'm going to get this wheel on on this side. And then we're going to set it down and I'm going to take a measurement and see if I need to take more off of that spring. And then uh, if I do, then I'll jack it back up. We'll pull more off that spring and then rinse and repeat. That way I'm only tearing one side down. That way I can go, oh, okay, so the other side needs two full turns taken out. Or if it's good, with just one and a half. So, uh, so we're going to do this real quick, put the wheels and tires on, and uh, we'll get her down on the ground and see what she looks like, and uh, we'll catch up then. So what do we think? <laughs> so what I did was I stuck the tape and got us right here, center line of the wheel, now, granted, it's probably going to settle in a little bit, not a lot, but I measured 29 inches to the lip where we were 20, I want to say it was 27 and a quarter back here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we were like 20, well, damn, it's even lower now. So, long story short, I don't know. So, we're going to play it safe, and what we're going to do is... We're just gonna go with the round and a half. Uh, it actually looks level. It's kind of hard to. It's kind of hard to, to get a good look at it with it, you know, having to look down the side of it. Mainly because I can't step back and see the whole side. So we're gonna leave it like this. We're gonna do a, uh, a round and a half on the other side. So we still got to do the passenger side, um, and drop it like that and see what it looks like in the daylight when we can pull it out. And if it needs another, you know, half a round of the spring taken off of it, it's not that hard to pull it in here, jack it up, pull the wheel off, pull the brake off, break that upper ball joint loose, lower it down, pull the spring, cut a half turn off of it. So uh, it's not that big of a deal. That's probably a probably an hour and a half, two hours tops. So uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to jack this thing back up, pull the wheels back off of it, and uh, I'm going to put the driver's side back together the way it's supposed to the way God intended. Um, so we'll put the, put the front end back together the way it's supposed to be. And, uh, we'll just let it ride, see how it does. So, uh, so I'm not going to film all that because, uh, it's just general maintenance stuff, reattaching the ball joint, which it's already attached. I just gotta, you know, get it, you know, tightened up, get the cotter key back in, put the brake cylinder or the brake, uh, you know, the thing, uh, caliper back on. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and then put the wheel back on. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side where pull the uh, upper ball joint loose. Um, pull the brake caliper off. <laughs> and then do the uh, spinning wheel of death and cut a spring with tension on it. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but, you know, it worked out okay. My, uh, my grinder wheel, my cutoff wheel, it... Uh, it didn't fare too well. It, it got a little chunk knocked out of it, but uh, that's all right. I've got a couple more I can throw on there. So, all right, we're going to do that. And then uh, I guess I'll be back with the final result. All right. So we finally wrapped up the front. Both sides, I cut a round and a half off in the most dangerous way possible. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that at home, people. That, uh, that's some sketchy, sketchy shit right there. I uh, 
basically destroyed two cutoff discs doing that. So uh, luckily it didn't destroy, you know, the money maker here. So uh, <laughs> Jackson's getting this thing jacked up to get the stands out from underneath it. And then we're going to drop her on the ground. So uh, stand by for that. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So let's see where we are. We're at 28 ish inches. And then back here, we are at uh, just below 27. So it's got a little bit of a rake to it, you know, going the wrong direction. But that's what all the cool kids are doing. Uh, let's see, what do we got on this corner? Yeah, we're still about a half inch high on this edge. And then this one, this one's actually a little bit lower than the other side, or yeah. So this one's at 27 and three quarter. So it's not quite level. It's okay. This is not perfect customs. This is good enough customs. So not too bad for 350 bucks. You know, uh, we dropped the rear about six inches with that axle flip. Um, we dropped the front just by cutting the coils, which I can go back and cut more off the coils. It's nowhere near as dangerous this time because there's a lot less coil spring there and it's not gonna be under constant pressure. So I could take another half round out of that thing and probably set this front end down a little bit more, uh, which would probably level it out a little bit better. Um, that passenger side may be a little bit higher because I couldn't quite get the angle I needed on the uh, on that coil spring over there. So it ended up being just a, I don't know, maybe an inch longer, half three quarter inch to an inch longer uh, on the coil turn because I couldn't get to the one spot. So we're gonna call it a night. Um, we've been at it since about 11 o'clock today. So we're at about eight hours today on dropping this thing. We spent about two hours last night doing work. So uh, so we're probably 10 hours in on this guy, 350 bucks and uh, has totally changed the look of this old work truck. So uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll have some sunshine. <laughs> we can back this guy out take it for a little cruise and uh, uh, see how she handles, see how it rides and uh, get a good shot of it out in the daylight. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tickled. I know Jackson's pretty tickled. He was, when we finally got it down off the ground, he's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So uh, anyways, <laughs> I guess uh, I'm gonna go inside and get a shower because I am freaking disgusting. So is that one over there. So, <laughs> so we'll see y'all in the morning. Oh, well, good morning. So, let's take a look at this guy in the daylight. Yeah, much, much better. So, uh, yeah, it still looks like the front's just a touch too high, but that's that's something we'll deal with later. Um, if you note the wonderful uh, evidence from Jackson going off the road and hitting the uh, fence, we pulled the duct tape off that was on here and just drilled some holes in the pinch weld, put uh, a couple zip ties on there. But, Let's see, take a step back. Yeah, I think the front, I think the front's just a touch too high. So we'll probably pull it back apart and literally cut like a, probably not a whole half round, but probably another quarter maybe, maybe another quarter round off. Get that front down another inch or so. So anyways, so we're fixing to take it out for a little test drive see you know changes in the way it feels and if it's too bouncy and plus we got the new shocks and all that fun stuff so we're gonna take it just up the road for a few minutes just see how she rides and uh and then we'll be uh we'll be back here to the house well, all right folks so uh we're still out cruising in the truck um just out out and about running around um of course, the alignment was a little bit off beforehand, so now the truck's a little bit, back to being a little bit more of a handful uh, as far as steering and wanting to wander. We had already said that we we're gonna wait on doing alignment until after we lowered it, so uh, now it's lowered, so we can go get an alignment. Um, the truck rides extremely well. Uh, it's very, very pillowy, I guess would be the word to, to use there. So uh, there's, there's no, you know, there's a couple bumps that we know of out here 
that literally just, you know, they'll rattle the fillings in your mouth. Um, yeah, it was just like getting hit in the face with a pillow, maybe, instead of just getting hit in the face with a brick. So, uh, yeah, very, very soft ride. So, uh, um, so very nice, very good. So we're headed back to the house and uh, uh, we're pretty much done with this one for this time. Um, I've got to get back and get to editing because uh, it, it's Sunday. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I got to get back, get my editing going. And then uh, uh, I don't know what's going to be coming in the future for Harvey. Um, maybe a few, maybe a few repair videos on some things. Um, I know we've got like inside his truck, passenger door, uh, door handle. Yeah, it's Bluetooth option. So uh, there's not one. It broke off. Uh, the exterior door handles, they're all loose and broken. And the window cranks, they're kind of beat all to pieces and missing parts. So uh, we may come back and do another one on uh, Harvey uh, where we go ahead and replace all those little pieces and parts. Um, maybe, uh, maybe put a sound system in this guy. Sorry, got a radio and a couple speakers, but it'd be nice to, you know, be nice to have that boom boom. So uh, I can't make too much fun of that one though, because I, I literally have subs and everything I, that I drive. So, <laughs> all right, so that's gonna do it. Um, I do appreciate each and every one of y'all that tune in and watch. Um, if you uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's it's right it's right there click it <laughs> subscribe but anyways i do appreciate each and every one of y'all that tune in and watch so uh so next week uh, i believe we're going to get back on the k5 we're going to work on getting uh getting the wheel wells in the rear fixed you know where i pretty much mangled them so we'll get them fixed up and then we'll uh we'll hit hit those guys with the 415 process and have that whole perimeter of the bed done and ready for the new bed to drop in and uh, so I think that's what we're going to work on next week. So uh, I guess till then, y'all guys have a good one. And just remember, it ain't got to be perfect, just good enough. So uh, y'all take it easy and we'll see y'all next week.